All right, so remember when I said that um, we want to have three quarters of, of an inch of material overlapping to bond onto the clear? I'm going to take my scribe tool and set it so that it's at three quarters of an inch. And now when you, when you scribe or when you cut this film off of this panel, you don't, don't push very hard at all because you can actually score that acrylic and make that a breaking point um, in the future for this panel. It will make a weak spot in it. So all you want to do is make sure you just lightly just cut so you're just cutting through the film. You're not really scoring the acrylic at all. Sometimes this stuff can be kind of a pain in the butt. There it goes. This works out nice because that gives you a very good edge to mark out your material so it's exactly in the right spot. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to go ahead and pause. You don't need to see it. I'm going to flip this over and, and uh, cut the film off the, the outside piece too. All right, so um, very important. We've got the inside piece that we're looking at right now. And we know, and if you, if you haven't or you need to, write it down on there because this film will come off and you can, um, it won't show. But we want to have two inches below the cut edge and three quarters of an inch above the, the uh, cut edge on your cut for your film there. So you just need to make sure that you have enough material down here at the bottom to do that. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to scribe right on the bottom edge of the cut on the clear. Then you're going to take your panel and you're going to slide it down so that you have now your three quarters of an inch up. Now I'm going to weight this down with my weight bag. And then I'm going to reset my scribe tool so that I have two inches because we know that we want two inches below this cut here. And go ahead and just scribe that in. Okay? And now you need to have what we call a reference line that goes vertical on your vertical cut pieces. And make sure that you're going up above it as well not just right from the bottom down you want to have that line that goes all the way up so <clears throat> when you move this out of the way now now you've got your finished two and three quarter inch piece okay you want to take however you want to do it um, the you're going to make this is going to become a fold line right because we want to have a folded edge and have it finished off up here on the top so what i like to do is i like to take either one inch or one and a quarter inches which i'm going to do one and a quarter inches okay um, to fold down and i'll show you why here in a second when we start sewing this thing together but just pet, trace a one and a quarter inch line above what we're going to ref, refer to now as a fold line okay so this this is a cut line this becomes a fold line or a finish line and you have your two and three quarter inch finish. So you can write this down, that this is the inside, and maybe this is the starboard panel, the front panel, whatever it is, but write it down what, what piece that is, all right? Now you can, now I, <clears throat> because this is a reference lines on both sides, don't cut off right on the line. Leave yourself some extra room there. But the bottom edge is a finished line. So you can cut that off. And then you know that this up here is a cut line also. Okay, so that's one half of that component. Let's put that to the side. And flip your piece over, because now you're going to do the outside piece. And again, I need to make sure that I have enough material here to do this. So I'm going to... 
Don't fast forward right now because this is, this is where it's going to change on you. So again, we're going to scribe the bottom edge like that. My pencil is kind of going bad on me. Then I'm going to slide this down, line it up exactly right, weight it, and this time I'm going to add one half inch to it. What this half inch is going to do is it's going to fold around on the inside piece to make the outside a nice finished edge. So you readjust this to two and a half inches to give you your extra half inch and repattern it. Okay, and again, I want these same reference lines, okay, because this is what we're going to use to line up these two pieces together. All right, so we can now move this out of the way and then take our ruler and make our cut line at the top at one and a quarter inch. Okay, now this has become our finished product. Cut outside your reference lines, you can cut right on your fold line or your cut line at the bottom. And at the top. Okay, so and again, right here, this is the outside, port, starboard, front, back, whatever it is. But now you've got your two pieces for the component. Next thing that you're going to want to do, and I'm going to move this out of the way. Actually, let me let me break for a sec. All right, because this is a snap line on the bottom of these pieces, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an extra heavy duty piece of vinyl and we'll make some reinforcing that's gonna go in there. And rather than, rather than taking a straight piece and cutting it and making little folds all over to reinforce that, I'm actually gonna scribe the reinforcing in. It just makes for a really nice, super looking finish on this thing, um, but it's, becomes pretty easy to do. You're just gonna you're gonna go on your inside piece again and I'm using a number two pencil so I can see it on this white vinyl. But I can scribe that in and now let me readjust this. Now I want a two inch a two inch reinforcing. That could be one and a half inches, two inches, whatever you you know need to make it. But th in this case two inches is going to be enough. So I don't need to pull I don't need to pull um, the clear down, right? Because I only want the reinforcing down at the bottom. I don't want it up on the three-quarter inch on the top. So when we move this out of the way, now I can now I can cut my reinforcing out. All right, so, and we know too that we don't want, that's the, this is the outside because we wrote down, this is the inside. And uh, one thing I didn't talk about is, you know, like stamoid or breakwater or any type of vinyl materials, there is an inside and an outside. So you want to make sure that, that all of your marks are getting marked on the outside or the good side of the fabric. But you can see that now this, if it goes on the inside, fits exactly right on here so we can come through here and we can put this stitch line and then this is going to get sandwiched in between the two pieces so you won't see the white vinyl and you won't see you're only going to stitch it on the inside pant piece so on the outside you won't have that extra stitch line on there just a little little something to make this project nice so now that i've got these done um one one more thing i'm going to do before i go to the sewing machine is uh we need to relieve this because we're going to fold it and cut it so let me do that all right <clears throat> now if anybody's ever seen any of my stuff before you know that i've got felt underneath my table so i can use these stick pens to just pin the the uh the piece down for folding edges and different stuff like that or, or making patterns doing that stuff but what i want to do is i want to come through here because this whole entire thing is round right i just want to put reliefs in it and I'm not cutting either, I'm cutting, you know, up to about an eighth inch to the line right there. 
but you want to relieve it all the way down on both pieces. Okay, so you can, you can now take, flip this over, and let me get a, let me get a different close-up here. Okay, see how it flipped over, and I can see the line is right there. What I want to do is I want to fold this over and crease it right on that line. Now I can take my pen, stick it through there, and hold it down. Use a clamp or whatever you have on your table. But now you can take this something hard and actually fold down and put a crease right on that line, all right? Now that's, that's a way to do this, when you use, because what happens is, see that, see how I gave myself a nice crease line? When I get to the machine, um, I, don't have to, I don't have to try to figure it out or try to line it up at the sewing machine. When you're up above it, just like this, you know, working down on it, it's a lot better for you to get that, that fold line, because remember, that's a, that's a finished line, right? So let me do, go through there and I'm going to do both of these and crease them and then we'll go to the sewing machine. All right, so now that I'm at the machine, I want to put my outside piece to the side for a second and I want to take my inside piece, right? And uh, let me grab a pencil, hang on. So I put this reference line so I can kind of just duplicate, just you know, put a little mark where that reference line is. And then we also have the reference line on this piece too to make sure that it's lined up. So I want to go ahead and... <clears throat> Okay, then, how did I do this? Uh-huh, mm-hmm, oh, it's upside down, maybe. There it is. <laughs> All right, what I want to do is take this piece and baste it or use some, some transfer tape. Just like that. Start back here with my lines. See it nice and flat. So you're not nothing's nothing's puckered up at all. And now we can come through here and stitch on the top edge. Now remember that this, even though it's the inside. Even though that's the inside, it's still visible. Still visible on the inside. So you want to do a good job of stitching that and making it nice and straight. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in here and now I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch this top edge down. But when we bond, I want to have a minimum of like three eighths of an inch. I'm sorry, like a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch for the, for the glue to bond at the top. So I'm going to stick this in here. And I'm gonna have like an eighth of an inch sticking out on the outside of my toe right there. But just nice and easy. Don't pull, push, or anything. You're just gonna put this, what we call the fake stitch line for the, the, the bonding in. Now take your top piece and do that same thing. Fold this over where you creased it and put a stitch in it. So you'll notice like right here I got a couple of big puckers right there. Just relieve it a little bit more if you need to. So there we go. Just relieve those so it'll lay nice and flat. Okay, now, now what I do is you can take your bottom piece and you can put it right on top of your top piece and then see the reference lines? 
You can see the reference lines right there? So all I need to do is, is line those reference lines up. Now, fortunately for us, we now have this one stitch line down here for the reinforcing that we can use as a guide. If you don't have that guide, you can mark something on your on your table or put one of those magnets or whatever to, to get your right distance. But again, this is gonna be very visible from the outside. So you wanna make sure that you have a, a nice parallel line. So lining those up, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put the outside of my foot right on top of that stitch line and use that as a reference. Now, now this is why we have one and a quarter inches because I wanna be able to stitch down all of these little flaps, right? so that they don't get caught or they get bonded properly. So stack these directly on top of each other and then take your time So now you've got it stitched together. Now what we want to do is take the bottom edge and we're going to fold this up over the in, the outside piece. We're going to fold up over the inside piece. But you do want to do the same thing with this. Just put reliefs in it, making sure that you don't go past where the fold is so that's not seen. Now, I get, honestly, this is pretty subjective. I mean, a lot of people, some people do this, some don't, some like it. You know, you can bind this bottom edge, you can fold this piece over. There's a lot of things that you can do right here. You can fold both of them in, stitch them together. There's a lot of things that you can do, but this seems to be what I do quite often, but not always. So fold that over and hold that down and stitch it down. So making sure that you're getting it completely folded. All right, so now you have a nice, finished, cleaned off, three stitch line component ready to get bonded on there. All right, so let's go do that. Let's go bond this on. All righty. Um, now, you know, now it's pretty obvious to tell that, you know, which component's which. Um, this is the insides of the inside, and it doesn't matter if you do how you do this. You can do it from the outside first and then inside. <clears throat> but because we have these reference lines, inside and outside. So it really doesn't matter how we, how we want to put this thing on here. Um, I, I'm going to do it the outside way. But basically, and now you can see that you, when you, on the inside of this thing, your little flaps are stitched down too. So you have just a pocket or sock for this thing to go, for the clear to go right inside there. And this can be a little bit tricky. My best advice to, to our thing I could tell you is use some tape to help hold this down. Um, and then you can kind of line it up. But now all you're going to do is just line the edge of your material down, use your reference line on the edge of the clear, and well, I'm going to... So with, this is a small piece, so it's, not, it's kind of cheating a little bit. But, but if this was a great big piece, what I do is I'll take a piece of tape, take a piece of tape, and get it where I want it, where I want it right there tape that down and then you can take little pieces of tape and if you fold this over you can kind of line it up where you want it and then just push that down and I do definitely always tape the entire thing I don't I don't put tape in between or skip the tape I should say Let's probably do that in one piece you put that on there, lift it up. You take your hand and kind of manipulate where this goes, hold it down, and then, okay. Now that you have that taped on, you can flip this over. Take your glue, 
And let me get a close up here. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put two beads of glue on, one down at the bottom of it, and I want just about an eighth inch bead, right? Kind of right down at the bottom of the clear. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get another one right at the top. All right, and then take your tape again. This side becomes easier to do because it's already on there, but With the Rhino glue, you have a couple of minutes of working time, okay? So don't rush, but don't slack either. I mean, you, all right, so let's, I'm going to do that side, and then what I always come back, not always, sometimes I'll weight that down right there, but I can come back now, leave the tape on the fabric, just lift that up, and run your glue again. All right, then you can come through and stick that side on. All right, so next thing that we have is I have these long sand weight bags and I'm gonna just weight that down. Now it does make a big difference if you're weighting this, when you weight this down. If you ever, if you ever do yourself a test and you don't weight it, and then you rip it off and see what it looks like, or if you do weight it, um, the weight gives a better bond. So always, always put some weight on there. Now, I'm, this is gonna sit for about two or three minutes. Now, keep in mind, um, usually I don't do one piece at a time. So I can let this sit while I'm building another piece, and then come back so you give that plenty of bond time on there. So I'll do that and we'll come back and then we'll start at the top. All right, so once you like give it enough bonding time, um, you peel your tape off and going the wrong way here. One thing that you don't want to ever do is leave this tape on too long or overnight because you'll have a hell of a time getting it off of there if it glues on there. Yeah, piece right there. Okay. So now I'm just going to use my reference lines and the edge of that clear and you can trim your pieces straight off. All right. Now, if you see, here's the outside of this thing. Look at that. That's as, that's as clean as you can get it. Now, I guess I, I mean, I'm kind of talking and I'm not paying attention as much. So, you know, my stitching isn't completely straight, but it's definitely satisfactory. You know, if you get your stitching real straight and take your time, that's as nice and finished as any job that you'll ever see out there. And I mean, yes, you do have the inside with these little splits right there. But it's on the inside and it's 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 okay i've never had anybody complain about that so now you notice that see we also have the extra stitch line for the reinforcing that's not out here so just makes it a little bit nicer looking so all right let's get going to the top 